Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School back out here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Kitchen. And I wanted to introduce you to a dish today that may not be as palatable as some of the things that we've talked about, but it, historically it's important to understand. And as a Civil War soldier, you didn't have a lot of food stuff readily available to you unless you were in an encampment where you had an actual assigned cook. And even then, the fare wasn't great most of the time. However, things that you had the majority of the time as a soldier would have been things like salted meat or salt pork that you would keep in your haversack, green coffee beans that you could roast to make coffee, and then something called hardtack. And hardtack was the bane of a soldier's existence. It was a food that could be preserved over a very long period of time. There's still hardtack in Civil War museums today that's still as good as it was the day it was issued to a soldier during the Civil War, or made for a Civil War supply. The way hardtack is made is it's made with unleavened flour and water, and that's mixed into a batter, and then it is baked and cut into squares with holes punched through them to dry it out quicker, but it's baked for a long period of time at a fairly medium temperature, and it becomes very, very hard, and that's why it's called high zone becomes very, very hard, and that's why it's called hard tack. It's also called tooth duller. So that tells you how hard this hard tack was. In fact, hard tack was so hard that many times soldiers had to use their rifle butts to smash this down to create the dish we're going to do today called skilly gully. And being that you didn't have much to cook with, you had to be fairly creative. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our skillet and our mess kit over to the fire here at the Pathfinder fire pit where we have our classes gather during the evenings and things like that to get warm, stay dry, and things of that nature, cook their food. And we're going to cook up some of this skilly golly today, so stay with me. All right, to make this skilly golly, our first order of business is to create some bacon grease by heating up some salt cured bacon. And we want to, again, avoid too much open flame because we don't want to burn it. So we're gonna let that fire burn down a little bit and kind of keep this off to the side until we get there, get some coals. Now the next thing we wanna do while that bacon's cooking is we wanna take our cup and our hard tack and we wanna break this up a little bit. And I'm just gonna use a mallet for this if I can. You can see how hard that is. I use wheat flour in this. Traditionally, it probably would have been white flour. And I'm not breaking it completely down into a powder. I'm just breaking it up so that I can rehydrate it. And I'm going to put that in the cup to rehydrate. Five second rule on this stuff applies. Okay. We'll let that soak for a few minutes while our bacon's cooking. So, so you're cooking this bacon to effectively do two things. Number one, get yourself a pan of grease. And number two, to have the bacon ready to be mixed in with your skilly golly. And we're almost there. All right, once our bacon is done, we're going to cut it up into chunks, small chunks or a knife. And then we're going to add our rehydrated hardtack. Drain most of the water off of that and put it in the skillet with the grease. Then, we'll get a little heat build up. We'll mix that together. That big chunk right there is not quite rehydrated yet, but it will be. Time we're done. Mix all this together in the grease. Get that hard tack to soak up the grease too.
And basically we're gonna cook this down. You can see that hard tack is pretty tough until it gets completely rehydrated. Having a hard time getting that piece there to cut up. I may just get rid of that dude. Set him off to the side there. Mix the rest of this in the grease. So now we want that grease to get soaked up by this hard tack and turn this kind of into a mush. Break it down, keep stirring it, heating it up until we get down to what we want. We're getting close now. Okay, about time to take this off the fire. Get a cup of coffee to go with it. See what she tastes like. Zahn, you don't want that, it's hot. Zahn, are you crazy? What is wrong with you? That's hot, get out of there. Goofball. Wait till it cools, oh my gosh, wait till it cools down, Zahn. Zahn, get out of there. Okay guys, so here we go. I'm gonna pull this off the trivet. I've got this on one of the Pathfinder Forge and Tool trivets, very similar to what they would have used during the Civil War period. I wanted to let this cool down before I put it directly on this cloth. And let the food cool down a little bit in the pan as well. I'm gonna eat it directly out of the pan here. Got a cup of coffee and we're ready to try this stuff. Now, I truly believe in my heart, and I've never found any documentation to this, maybe somebody has it and can send it to me, that they put brown sugar or molasses in this. But I find it hard to believe, especially in the South, that they wouldn't have added some type of sweetener to this so it didn't just taste so salty and you have to drink so much water to get it down. It's actually not as salty as I thought it was going to be. Oh, it's actually not bad at all. Yeah, pretty good. I can see. Takes a bit of chewing though. I can definitely see where this would be a filling meal because that flour and water hard tack kind of swells up when it's rehydrated. Puts a pretty big chunk in your gut when you're eating it. Pretty good. Obviously it's not something that you're gonna die to cook, but if you had to live on it, you could. And they did. That was one hard tack, four thin slices of bacon, small, in the skillet. It's actually not bad at all. I still think a little molasses or honey, or brown sugar might make it taste better, but it's not bad the way it is for sure. I can see why they wanted coffee to wash it down though. Because it is thick. But it's filling. It's really good. A lot better than I thought it was going to be. Hmm. Of course, we have the novelty of eating it every once in a while. I would imagine if you ate it every single day, you get pretty monotonous pretty fast. But that's why soldiers were so creative at cooking and things and making things like this out of what they had. They had to be. Guys, I appreciate you joining me out here today for another episode in our cooking series here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Kitchen. Again, this is not one of the more palatable, awesome, I'm going to cook it all the time things. This is one of those things that has historical value and learning value in preserving foods. You've got two foods here three foods really, that are very easy to preserve. Coffee beans, which would make your coffee. 
salt pork, and hardtack. All those things can be made at home. All those things can be taken with you on the trail. And all of those things can last a very long time on the trail or in a hunting camp if needs be. They lasted during the Civil War. They'll still last today. Guys, I appreciate your views and I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back to another video in this series as soon as I can. And make sure to check out the Pathfinder Outdoor Kitchen on Self-Reliance Outfitters with Matt Marshall. Thanks, guys. Okay, I had to share the last few bites with Zon here. I think he's picking out the bacon and leaving the hard tack. He's like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs>